you are very welcome wherever you are whoever you are you are very welcome towards the end of jesus's earthly ministry he made a triumphant entrance into jerusalem on the back of a young donkey you will know that as palm sunday For many, this represented their hopes. The Messiah was coming, the one who was going to re-establish the sovereignty of Israel. Rome would be driven out and yeah, Israel would enjoy the peace that the prophets in the Old Testament had so long promised. But as we know, uh, Jesus' goals were very different to that of the Jews of the day. And despite the large crowd shouting Hosanna, waving palm branches, saying, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, despite all of that, many of those voices would turn around later and they would be the ones shouting, crucify him. It was a, a time of turmoil. And it's in this time of turmoil that Jesus brings us a little parable. It's not quite so well known as many of the others. It's called the parable of the two sons. And we'll have a little look at that one today. But first, let us share together in worship as we sing.
And so Jesus arrives at the temple again, and he has a bit of a confrontation with the chief priests. They want to know where he is getting all his authority from. You know, basically, who do you think you are and, and why can you do what you are doing? Jesus does not give them a straight answer. Instead, he tells them this little story. There was a man who had two sons. He went to the first and said, son, go and work today in the vineyard. I will not, he answered. But later he changed his mind and he went. Then the father went to the other son and said the same thing. The other son answered, I will, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did what his father wanted? The first, the religious leaders said. Jesus said to them, truly I tell you, the tax collectors and prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you to show you the way of righteousness and you did not believe him, but the tax collectors and the prostitutes and the sinners, they all did. And even after you saw this, you did not repent and believe. The Pharisees know that Jesus is talking about them once again. I mean, the number of times they've had confrontations. You see, they tended to believe that Jesus was always offending them, always trying to aggravate them, always trying to confront them. I mean, in their opinion, they believe that Jesus ate with the wrong people. He won't answer their questions in a straight manner. He taunts them by breaking the laws and healing on the Sabbath. He calls them hypocrites, would you believe it? And blind leaders. And when they give him a few traps, like showing him some coins and saying, who should you pay taxes to? He gets out of all of their traps. He's a Amazing. Well, to us he is, but certainly not to them. He leaves them speechless. They just cannot catch a break with Jesus. He will not let up. But that's our Jesus, isn't it? He will not let up. Do you think he's looking for a fight? I don't. I don't think that's Jesus' way. No. Do you think he's out to try and expose everybody who doesn't follow him and, you know, condemn them? No, I don't think that's his way either. Is he keeping a score of all the bad things they do, these Pharisees? Is, is that what he's up to? No, no, I don't think that's it either. Is he trying to exclude them, keep them out of the kingdom? No. No, no, definitely not. I think Jesus doesn't let go of them because he really, really, really wants them to do good. It just keeps on coming. He will not let them go until they understand who he truly, truly is. And that is the good news. That is the good hope. That is the good joy in this little parable. It is a parable of Jesus' willingness never to give up. I think that includes us. Because sometimes we can be like the Pharisees, we can say one thing and do another, we can say another thing and do another thing again. We just, we just aren't there sometimes. But he will not give up. He wants us to be part of the kingdom. He wants us to bring fruit into the kingdom. And that's what he wanted for the Pharisees. They didn't realize it, but that's what he wanted. He wanted the Pharisees to work in the vineyard of the kingdom, to bring mercy and forgiveness, to bring justice, generosity, compassion, wisdom, all of that which they could have done if they'd really understood who he was. And that's what Jesus wants us to bring into the vineyard of his kingdom today. 
And where is the vineyard of his kingdom? It's just where we are. Our workplaces, our families, our social places. Jesus says, I want you to work in the vineyard for me, to bring in all of these fruits. What is our reply? Is it, yep, yeah, but then we go off and do something else? Or is it, yeah, I don't know, but then we decide to do it? We all reply in different ways, but this I know. Jesus will not give up. He never has, and he never will. Thanks be to God. Amen. We pray for all who can make decisions. Those in positions of high responsibility, that they should make the decisions for the good of the people that they are over. We pray for ourselves as we make good decisions. Which of the two sons would we be like? Are we people who say yes and keep to our word? Are we people who are more cautious but actually get there in the end? Help us in our decisions this week, O oh Lord. May our decisions bring good kingdom values. Mercy, righteousness, grace, joy, peace and hope. We hold before you all who are in our hearts this day, all who need your touch. May the decisions we make be for the good of them. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. And we say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Another of the readings set for today is that from the second chapter of Philippians, a very beautiful section which reminds us of Christ's humanity and how we should endeavour to be like him. I will share those words with you and then following that there is a hymn. Originally it was set for Christmas but it's, it's fine for any time of the year, it's really beautiful. I hope you will enjoy it. Philippians chapter 2. If you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any fellowship with the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and purpose. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility consider others better than yourselves. Each of you should look not only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself, he became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place, and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen.
Don't breathe.